Haiti, an island nation, lush, tropical, vibrant culture, and captivating history. But beneath its beauty lies a current of something darker, whispered about but rarely understood, Haitian voodoo. For centuries, tales have spread about Haitian voodoo, whispers of strange rituals and powerful spirits, a religion shrouded in secrecy, communing with the dead. It can heal and harm with equal potency. Haitian voodoo emerged from the horrors of the transatlantic slave trade. It arose from the fusion of West African spiritual traditions with Catholicism. Enslaved Africans clung to their beliefs, blending ancient practices with the religion of their captors. This fusion created something uniquely Haitian. It acknowledges one god and a pantheon of spirits called Loa, intermediaries between the human and divine realms. Each Loa governs a different aspect of life, love, death, healing, music, and more. Through rituals and offerings, practitioners seek the guidance and favor of the Loa. They believe the Loa can intercede on their behalf, helping them navigate life's challenges. But for those unfamiliar, the worship of these spirits can appear sinister. This is the world of Haitian voodoo. To understand Haitian voodoo, we must journey back to its roots in West Africa. Diverse tribes with rich spiritual traditions were torn from their homelands and forced onto slave ships. These Africans carried their beliefs with them, centered around a supreme being and a world inhabited by spirits. This reverence for ancestors became a cornerstone of Haitian voodoo. This fusion created something new, something powerful, something uniquely Haitian. The French colony of Saint-Domingue, later known as Haiti, became a melting pot of African cultures. Enslaved Africans from different tribes found themselves thrown together, blending their unique spiritual practices. Under the oppressive conditions of slavery, these traditions intertwined, forming a new faith that provided solace and strength. This syncretic religion, born from the fusion of African spirituality and elements of Catholicism, became known as voodoo. The Catholic Church attempted to suppress these practices, forcing slaves to convert to Christianity. But true faith cannot be extinguished by force. They incorporated elements of Catholicism into their existing beliefs. Catholic saints became associated with African spirits, and Christian rituals were adapted to fit within the framework of voodoo. This blending of traditions created a religion that was both familiar and distinct. It allowed enslaved Africans to maintain a connection to their heritage while navigating their new reality. The fusion of African traditions and Catholicism gave rise to the unique pantheon of spirits at the heart of Haitian voodoo, the Loa. These Loa, often referred to as mysteries or invisibles, are intermediaries between humans and the supreme creator god, Bondi. Each Loa has a distinct personality and specific domains over which they preside. Practitioners of voodoo believe that by honoring the Loa through offerings, songs, and dances, they can petition them for guidance, protection, and assistance. The rituals of Haitian voodoo, steeped in symbolism and tradition, became a powerful form of resistance against the horrors of slavery. They provided a sense of community and hope in the face of despair. They connected the enslaved Africans with their ancestors and a power greater than their oppressors. This spiritual resistance played a crucial role in the Haitian Revolution, the only successful slave revolt in history. It fueled the flames of rebellion unified the enslaved population and instilled in them the courage to fight for their freedom. This is the world of Haitian voodoo. The God of the Bible, worshipped by Christians worldwide, is a God of love, mercy, and light. He calls upon his followers to turn away from darkness and embrace goodness and righteousness. This God stands in stark contrast to the practices and beliefs associated with Haitian voodoo. Voodoo, with its emphasis on spirits, rituals, and sacrifices, directly contradicts the teachings of Christianity. The Bible is clear, there is only one God, and worship should be directed solely towards Him. Any attempt to communicate with or appease other spiritual entities is seen as idolatry and an abomination in the eyes of God. The rituals practiced within Haitian Voodoo, often involving animal sacrifice and spirit possession, are seen as barbaric and demonic by many Christians. At the heart of the Christian condemnation of Haitian voodoo 
lies a recognition of its dark and sinister rituals and practices. The use of animal sacrifice, often seen as barbaric and cruel, underscores the grim nature of voodoo. These offerings are part of a disturbing tradition that blurs the line between life and death. Spirit possession, a central aspect of voodoo ceremonies, is often seen as demonic influence. This practice is viewed as allowing dark spirits to take control, leading to unsettling and dangerous outcomes. The problem arises from the stark contrast between these practices and the teachings of Christianity. What may appear as spiritual to some is often seen as sinister and malevolent to others. These rituals are seen as attempts to connect with dark forces, seeking power and protection from malevolent spirits. Instead of understanding these practices as culturally significant, it's crucial to recognize their dark and dangerous nature. Only through the light of Jesus can we find true goodness and positivity, moving beyond the darkness of voodoo. Despite attempts to understand Haitian voodoo through a less biased lens, the association with evil persists. This perception is fueled by the dark and sinister way voodoo is often portrayed in popular culture. Movies, books, and television shows frequently depict voodoo as a force of darkness, a tool for evil sorcerers to inflict harm and manipulate others. This representation is actually accurate and taps into deep-seated fears of voodoo and rightfully so. The imagery of voodoo dolls, curses, and zombies has become so ingrained in the public consciousness that it can't hide its evil ways. New Orleans a city steeped in mystery, where history and legend intertwine. Known for its vibrant music, unique cuisine, and undeniable air of magic, it also harbors the current of Haitian voodoo. While geographically distant, New Orleans and Haiti share a deep connection forged in the crucible of the transatlantic slave trade. In the 18th century, New Orleans became a major port for the slave trade, bringing thousands of Africans, many from Haiti, to the city. They brought with them their traditions, beliefs, and practice of voodoo. The religion, already established in the Caribbean, found fertile ground in New Orleans. The city's mix of cultures, tolerance for different spiritual practices, and atmosphere of secrecy provided a haven for voodoo to flourish. It thrived alongside other religions, its influence subtly woven into the fabric of New Orleans society. No figure embodies the intersection of Haitian voodoo and New Orleans more than Marie Laveau. Born in the city in 1801, Laveau became a legendary practitioner of voodoo, a respected community leader, and a symbol of the religion's enduring power. Known as the Voodoo Queen of New Orleans, her name still evokes a sense of mystery and intrigue. Laveau's life was a mix of fact and legend, commanding immense respect and influence within New Orleans. She was both feared and revered, a skilled herbalist and healer sought out by people from all walks of life. Her rituals and ceremonies drew large crowds, cementing her status as a prominent figure in the practice of voodoo. Laveau's influence extended beyond spirituality. She pretended to be a vocal advocate for social justice. It was a money-making scheme to enrich herself more than likely. She used her position to advocate for the poor and marginalized, further solidifying her legendary status. While Laveau's story is unique, it highlights the significant role Haitian voodoo played in shaping the cultural landscape of New Orleans. It's a legacy that continues to this day, evident in the city's ongoing fascination with voodoo and its celebration of African heritage. The influence of Haitian voodoo in New Orleans extends beyond religion, seeping into the city's music, food, art, and atmosphere. The rhythms of voodoo drums brought over from Africa and echoed in Haitian ceremonies can be heard in the city's jazz and blues music. The vibrant colors and intricate designs associated with voodoo spirits find expression in the city's art scene, from traditional paintings and sculptures to modern street art. The use of herbs and spices in Haitian voodoo rituals has also left its mark on New Orleans cuisine. Gumbo, a staple dish of New Orleans, traces its roots back to West African traditions reflecting the influence of Haitian culinary practices. Voodoo's emphasis on ancestor veneration and its belief in the continuing presence of spirits have contributed to New Orleans' distinctive city of the dead atmosphere. The elaborate above-ground cemeteries, vibrant celebrations of life and death during Mardi Gras and All Saints Day, and the city's overall comfort with the macabre all speak to the enduring influence of Haitian voodoo.
This cultural fusion has created a city where the veil between the spiritual and material world seems thinner, where the past is always present. The story of Haitian voodoo in New Orleans is not just a story of cultural exchange, it is also a story of resistance. For the enslaved Africans brought to the city, voodoo offered a way to maintain their cultural identity in the face of oppression. It provided a sense of community and solidarity in a hostile environment. The rituals and ceremonies often hidden from the eyes of slave owners became a form of covert resistance. The very act of practicing their religion despite the threat of punishment was an act of defiance, preserving their humanity in a system that sought to strip them of it. The Christian faith draws a clear line between the light of God and the darkness of the occult. Many place Haitian voodoo on the side of darkness, not simply as a different religion but as a dangerous detour into the arms of evil. Central to this perception is the concept of black magic, the idea that voodoo practitioners can harness supernatural forces for nefarious purposes, to curse their enemies, inflict illness, or control the wills of others. The Bible warns against such practices, labeling them as abominations. Leviticus 19, 31 states, Do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists, for you will be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. This perception of voodoo as a dangerous and forbidden knowledge persists, fueled by true portrayals in popular culture. Movies, books, and television shows frequently depict voodoo as a force of darkness, reinforcing the dark truth and deep-seated fears. This representation is a reminder of how Satan works through godless practices and gives Christians a reminder to stay away from such things. It is crucial to move beyond excuses and understand that Haitian voodoo within its cultural and historical context is still evil, no matter what color lipstick you put on this pig. The association of Haitian voodoo with Satan worship is deeply ingrained. It stems from the truth of the religion's core tenets. The Christian worldview rightfully won't accommodate a belief system with many spirits. The Loa, spirits in Haitian voodoo, are demons, evil entities practitioners bargain with for power. This fuels the belief that voodoo rituals are done in the name of Satan. However, Haitian voodoo recognizes a supreme god, Bondi. Satan takes many forms. The Loa are intermediaries, not rivals to Bondi. The Price of Power The allure of power is a universal human desire. It transcends cultural and religious boundaries. But the Christian faith warns against unholy means. True power comes from God alone. Haitian voodoo is often used by Satan. Fear of succumbing to temptation. Fear of paying a terrible price for forbidden knowledge. Tales of voodoo curses abound. Stories of sorcerers controlling elements. These tales are often rooted in superstition. The reality is far more real. Haitian voodoo practitioners seek to connect with the divine. That divine is an evil divine. Some call him Lucifer. Section 4. Echoes of Fear The fear surrounding Haitian voodoo echoes through history. It has been exploited to use practices of evil and curses for ungodly reasons. Slave owners used the specter of voodoo to control their slaves. They stoked fears of black magic. They punished any hint of voodoo practice. This served to isolate and suppress cultural resistance. Even after abolition, the fear persisted. The echoes of this fear can still be felt today. It is time to distance ourselves from Haitian voodoo with our eyes on God. Section 1. Legacy of Shadows, Haitian Voodoo, a religion shrouded in mystery. It has carried the weight of evil for centuries, its roots, planted in the soil of slavery and nourished by the spirit of Satan, twisted into something menacing to those who love Christ. We've journeyed through the dark heart of this fear. We've seen how the lines between faith and superstition, between cultural practice and demonic association, have been blurred. The legacy of this fear is undeniable. It lingers in the whispers about black magic. It hides in the shadows of Hollywood horror. It even tries to find a home in those who follow the one true God. But this fear is real. A Christian has no obligation to tolerate it. Section 2. Seeking Understanding To truly understand Haitian voodoo, one must look beyond the surface. 
see it through the eyes of Jesus Christ because we are the body of Christ. It's a pact with the devil made by their ancestors who at some point got fooled by Satan or accepted him, a source of evil in a world that has to be put under Christ's feet.